Good morning. <laughs> Gonna try that one more time, okay? Hi, good morning. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Tam Nguyen Lam Thao Tam. And as of my 20th cycle on Earth, I am currently a freelance actress, MC, and model, and most importantly, a university student. Now, the F TEDx FPTU University Ho Chi Minh City stage today is reserved for extraordinary steps. And that is what I believe I'm brought in to tell you about. And on my uh, slide presentation, right here, is a picture of a compass. Now, this is a little device we use to navigate and uh, find our way. But I truly believe that within every single one of us is an inner one of these, a moral compass. And I'm going to tell you a summarized version of how I followed this little device for 20 years, especially through the most extraordinary year that I've had so far which is my year of being 14. So growing up, I was uh, a very, very curious child. I grabbed every single book I could get and read with this certain passion. And I also saw a lot of foreign television. So Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, all of that. So in turn, I learned a lot of English even outside of the school curriculum without taking extracurricular classes. And that led me to this one event in my life where I was in fifth grade, which means I was 10 years old, and my father, who's in the audience right now, he handed me an examination paper for the graduation exam for high schoolers in the topic of English. And I completed that within 20 minutes. A few weeks later, he returned with another sheet of exam, and it was the D major university entrance exam for those same high schoolers that year, and I completed it within 30 minutes before giving up because it was very hard. But tallying up the scores, I received eight points and five points for each exam designed for 18-year-olds when I was 10 years old. And I would say that those are some satisfying results. And I've also had a really soft spot for the arts growing up, and that is something that grew and grew with me as I became who I am today. And that kind of accumulated in me becoming an MC, model, and actress for the past four years now. Most noticeably in the movie Makbi, which premiered last year. Now all of this might sound really flashy and extraordinary, I would say, but I promise you, there is absolutely no magic behind all of this. Now, I'm gonna ask you, do you know how a compass is made? And I'm talking about the most ancient compasses, like the most early, the earliest version of it. So the earliest compasses were made of a sort of case, water, and a magnetized needle. So the function of it is a magnetized needle will respond to the Earth's magnetic field and always point north, which is that direction. But here's the thing. In earliest versions of it, without water lifting the needle off of the case, the needle will not be able to spin. And here's a fun fact about me. Growing up, I was a notoriously difficult child to raise and teach. I was very hyper, I had a very short attention span, and I was very, very reckless. All traits of which would lead to a lot of trouble. But it was exactly the environment that raised me that allowed me to become the best version of myself. They were the water to my needle. And what is this environment? What is this water? Well, actually, it's my family and my parents sitting right there. So when I was growing up, they did their very, very best to cultivate the environment around me, to help it foster my growth. They made reading fun, they made me excited about books, they took me to see shows like Ngai Su, Ngai Su, musical plays that inspired my love for language and arts up until this very day. And it is with their love and care that let me be a happy child, even despite my shortcomings. And that's 
what eventually allowed me to achieve all of the amazing things that I did. I was the best version of myself. And some of my achievements were proof of that. But here's the thing. That is not always the case. Environments can change way more drastically and way more severely than a person ever can. And that is a reality that I came face to face with when I had to leave the security of my parents' embrace and enter into middle school. Out of the 20 years that I have spent being alive on this earth, the four years that I was in middle school was the absolute hardest because I was bullied for the entire period of time, on and off, from nasty remarks to gossip to a slap across my face, it escalated very quickly and I had very little time to register. And I internalized that and couldn't tell anybody about it because how could I speak of something I couldn't even process at first? So I responded the only way I knew how to, poorly and very, very bitterly. I told you I was a very stubborn and a very reckless child, right? Without a nourishing and supportive environment, all of that came surfacing once again. I was bitterly harsh towards people I disliked, and I wanted to win the approval of my bullies so much, I adopted their mannerisms. But very soon after, I became very, very scared of the person I was. I was cruel, bitter, and so tired. With all of that in mind, I couldn't have the mental capacity for studying something that I did very well on up until that very point. And my grades absolutely plummeted. I've never done worse academically in my life. In turn, I had to develop certain coping mechanisms to deal with the stress and deal with the tension within me. And honestly, those coping mechanisms were far from being healthy. I self-isolated. I stayed up until 3, 4 a.m. in the morning reading so much I tired myself until I accidentally fell asleep and woke up the next day at 6 a.m. to go to class. And at the height of it all, I self-harmed, the scars of which still on my wrist until today. At 14 years old, I was at the most depressed a lone point in my life. I had nowhere to run, no one to turn to, and this constantly growing feeling of desperation. And there was this one phenomenon that constantly kept happening. So when I was in middle school, every day when I returned from school, I would pass on this, I would pass this window that opened up to a ledge on the side of my apartment building very, very high up. And for some reason, I've always felt very drawn to that window. One day, a particularly uneventful afternoon, I returned home and was tired enough of my life to take off my school bags and climb out of that window. And I just worked and I just walked forward. but exactly half a step from plummeting 50 meters onto the pavement to my death, I decided to stop and look at the sky. It was a very, very beautiful afternoon. The sky was this perfect pastel pink that was seeping into orange and purple, and the clouds were a wispy white that just strung across the atmosphere. And it reminded me so much of the watercolor paintings that I used to make, that I used to see, and the vocabulary with which I'm describing this afternoon in my head, in English, remind me so much of the conversations that I used to have with my parents. And all of this made me feel so immensely at peace. So what did I do next? I just sat down 
with my legs crossed over the ledge like this, and I just stared at the sky as the afternoon turned into evening. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that step of sitting down with my legs crossed over like this is the single most extraordinary step that I've taken in my 20 years of life. Thinking back, I often credit that beautiful afternoon, the sky turning those various colors to be what eventually saved my life. But in reality, I don't think so. I believe that the child that learned so much about arts, that learned so much about language, it internalized and became something so important to her it helped her survive to witness a beautiful afternoon, despite all that she's been through. And that compass that I mentioned to you about, well, I genuinely believe that the compass, the moral compass, was with me all along, one way or another. But like I said, it was made up of several components. And at one point, as I went through all of my turmoil, the case did crack and water was spilling out. I was very unsupported at that moment, but the thing is, the needle pointing north, the needle embedded with everything that was good about me, everything I made good about me, was never broken. Filling the compass back up with enough water, with enough support, was just a matter of time. But who was responsible for filling up that water? A very cute analogy that I made while writing this piece was that, according to the theory of elements, or Thuyết Ngũ Hàn, my element is metal, kim, and my mother's element is water, Thuy. So water supports needles, right? And that is true. My parents were the first supportive environment that I had. They lifted me up and allowed me to point at the right direction, to point north. But the thing is, there will come a time in our lives where we will be forced to move out of the point of comfort and away from our protective environments. And we will feel drained. We will feel unsupported. And we will feel misdirectioned. But the most important thing I realized in that afternoon on the ledge was that it's true. I feel drained, and I feel alone. But from that point forward, what I do with my environments and what environment I choose to put myself in, that is entirely up to me. And there is no need to sacrifice all about me, no need to erase every single achievement that I've done in my life for the lack of environment. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take care of your moral compasses. I want you to be able to choose the sort of environment that you put yourself in and make that decision innately you and know that you always have a choice. But rest assured that every single thing good about you embedded in the compass needle pointing north, every single good value, every single thing intrinsically yourself, I truly believe it is never broken. Thank you very much.